Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this in the future. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments on what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurzgesagt video on fusion power. Um, this one's also a fairly old one, I believe it's about six years old, but I know um, we just recently had a uh, fusion reaction where you got a little bit more than what we actually put into the, re uh, to the uh, reactor, so that's a very exciting time. Anyway, let's take a look at the video. The fundamental currency of our universe is energy. It lights our homes, grows our food, powers our computers. We can get it lots of ways, burning fossil fuels, splitting atoms, or sunlight striking photovoltaics. But there's a downside to everything. Fossil fuels are extremely toxic, nuclear waste is, well, nuclear waste, and there are not enough batteries to store sunlight for cloudy... Obligatory green comment for those of you who haven't seen my videos about the waste. <laughs> yet. And yet, the sun seems to have virtually limitless free energy. Is there a way we could build a sun on Earth? Can we bottle a star? The sun shines because of nuclear fusion. In a nutshell, fusion is a thermonuclear process, meaning that the ingredients have to be incredibly hot, so hot that the atoms are stripped of their electrons, making a plasma where nuclei... Oh, that's a really funny animation. <laughs> ...and electrons bounce around freely. Since nuclei are all positively charged, they repel each other. In order to overcome this repulsion, the particles have to be going very, very fast. In this context, very fast means very hot. Millions of degrees. Stars cheat to reach the... So fusion is not one of my experts of, of or my areas of expertise, rather, uh, but you do need a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and a lot of time to uh, confine these particles together in order to sustain a reaction. One of the big advantages of stars is they have a lot of gravity, so a lot of pressure, a lot of heat at the center. Temperatures. They are so massive that the pressure in their cores generates the heat to squeeze the nuclei together until they merge and fuse, creating heavier nuclei and releasing energy in the process. It is this energy release that scientists hope to harness in a new generation of power plant, the fusion reactor. On Earth, it's not feasible to use this brute force method to... Cr Catch sun, throw onto Earth, <laughs> enjoy your fusion. <laughs> In fusion, so if we wanted to build a reactor that generates energy... Love the Dragon Ball reference. <laughs> ...from fusion, we have to get clever. To date, scientists have invented two ways of making plasmas hot enough to fuse. The first type of reactor uses a magnetic field to squeeze a plasma in a donut-shaped chamber where the reactions take place. These magnetic confinement reactors, such as the ITER reactor in France, use superconducting electromagnets cooled with liquid helium to within a few degrees of absolute zero, meaning they host some of the biggest temperature gradients in the known universe. The second type, called inertial confinement, uses pulses from superpowered lasers to heat the surface of a pellet of fuel, imploding it, briefly making the fuel hot and dense enough to fuse. In fact, one of the most powerful lasers in the world is used for fusion experiments at the National Ignition Facility in the US. These experiments and others like them around the world are today just experiments. Scientists are still developing the technology. And although they can achieve fusion, right now it costs more energy to do the experiments than they produce in fusion. Again, this video is a few years old. Um, a major milestone was just reached with you're getting just as much energy in it, out of it as you put in. Still a long way to go before making it viable, but that's a very important milestone. Technology has a long way to go before it's commercially viable. And oh, I think I know what they're getting at with this. It never will be. 
it might just be impossible to make it. <laughs> so the joke with fusion is um, it was 20 years away 40 years ago, and that's been a thing since probably the 1970s or even earlier. Viable fusion reactor on Earth. But if it gets there, it would be so efficient that a single glass of seawater could be used to produce as much energy as burning a barrel of oil with no waste to speak of. This is because fusion reactors would use hydrogen or helium as fuel, and seawater is loaded with hydrogen. But not just any hydrogen will do. Specific isotopes with extra neutrons, called deuterium and tritium, are needed to make the right re reactions. <laughs> Deuterium is stable and can be found in abundance in seawater, though tritium is a bit trickier. It's radioactive, and there may only be 20 kilograms of it in the world, mostly in nuclear warheads, which makes it incredibly expensive. So we may need another fusion buddy for deuterium instead of tritium. Helium-3, an isotope of helium, might be a great substitute. Unfortunately, it's also incredibly rare on Earth. But here, the moon might have the answer. Over billions of years, the solar wind may have built up huge deposits of helium-3 on the moon. Instead of making helium-3, we can mine it. If we could sift the lunar dust for helium, we'd have enough fuel to power the entire world for thousands of years. One more argument for establishing a moon base, if you weren't convinced already. There's a lot of sci-fi out there about mining helium-3 on the moon. It's a... Uh... It's interesting. Okay, maybe you think building a mini sun still sounds kind of dangerous. But they don't. You're not exactly doing building a mini sun. You're just having a, diff a different heat source using a similar um, steam cycle that's been around for a couple of hundred years. All you're doing is changing the, the heat source. It'd be much safer than most other types of power plant. A fusion reactor is not like a nuclear plant, which can melt down catastrophically. It Again, um, that's, that's sort of a loaded uh, thing. Um, so nuclear plants have many um, diverse and redundant safety systems to keep that in play, to uh, protect the public against something like that. But um, I see what they're getting at. With, fu with uh, fusion, you wouldn't have the same risk because the... Uh, the way the uh, the way the uh, system would shut itself down would be entirely passive. Confinement failed, then the plasma would expand and cool, and the reaction would stop. Just like that. <laughs> Put simply, it's not a bomb. Neither is a nuclear power plant. Um, it wouldn't be like a bomb. It would just be some. Again, the, the concern is about getting something very hot. There's a big misconception out there that a uh, that melting of a nuclear fuel is akin to producing a bomb. It's not. It's just making something very hot. Um, whereas a bomb is a completely uh, different process. Uh, nuclear fusion is actually used in um, some of the more powerful uh, bombs that are that are out there. But again, as 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 a power source, we're talking about completely different um, modes of operation, completely different enrichments. Um, a uh, nuclear power plant would not be like a bomb. What would be closer to a bomb would actually be something like a petrochemical plant or an oil refinery. They use a lot more volatile material that could explode in the event of an accident. The release of radioactive fuel like tritium could pose a threat to the environment. Tritium could bond with oxygen making radioactive water, which could be dangerous as it seeps into the environment. Fortunately, there's no more than a few grams of tritium in use at a given time, so a leak would be quickly diluted. Yeah, again, dilution the sol uh, solution to pollution, as they say. Uh, very few trace amounts of, uh, of, of tritium in the world. So we've just told you that there's nearly unlimited energy to be had at no expense to the environment in something as simple as water. So, what's the catch? Cost. We simply don't know if fusion power will ever be commercially viable. Even if they work, they might be too expensive to ever build. The main drawback is that it's unproven technology. 
It's a $10 billion gamble, and that money might be better spent on other clean energy that's already proven itself. Maybe we should cut our losses. Or maybe, when the payoff is unlimited clean energy for everyone, it might be worth the risk. Videos like this one take... As far as my thoughts on it, um, definitely worth still investing in uh, fusion, uh, but it's just like with anything else, um, just like managing your stock portfolio, you need to invest in multiple things, um, more um, conventional uh, nuclear plants, um, re renewables have their place, um, fusion and other uh, more advanced technologies have their place in order to uh, keep us moving as, uh, as, a, as a society. Uh, <laughs> One thing, I was actually very briefly, um, when I was in college, interested in looking into uh, fusion, <laughs> but um, I had this one professor who had been there for 40 years uh, doing fusion research, and over the years, all of his ideas being struck down over time uh, just because it wasn't worth the, uh, the money, and... Uh, <laughs> He ended up looking like a um, depressed, older uh, Santa Claus that the kids don't believe in him anymore. <laughs> so, unfortunately, those sort of things happen with uh, any type of new technology that is struggling to uh, get off the ground. But let me know what you think below in the comments. I um, think we're going to see fusion in 20 years, 20 years for real, less than 20 years end of the century uh, <laughs> let me know down in the comments thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time